when James Gunn's The Suicide Squad comes out in August, I will update this ranking in a community post, so stay tuned for that. And I'll probably mention it in, in my review as well, which I'll be doing when I'm seeing the film. And now it is time. Hey everyone, Luke and Most Prime here, so it is time for another movie review today, and today guys, I'm going to be reviewing the next instalment of the D6 Extended Universe, which is called The Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn, which is a standalone sequel to the 2016 film Suicide Squad, so yeah, I just got back from watching it, and now it's time to review, so this will contain major spoilers guys, so if you guys haven't seen the movie yet, I'd suggest that you go watch it right now, it's in cinemas, and it's on HBO Max, for any of you that use HBO as a streaming service, so yeah. I'm going, to cut down, I'm going to cut down from 3 to 1 on, um, so yeah, this is, this is your warning guys, so yeah, um, 3, 2, 1, okay, so here we go, now, what do I think of this movie, so, I'm going to come out and say guys, but um, confidently that, um, this movie, in my humble opinion, was a major improvement to a 2016 movie, a really big improvement now, do I think it was perfect, the best EU movie? No, not not at all really, because I did have a couple of issues with movies, so it's not my favourite DC Extended Universe film, but I still really thoroughly enjoyed this movie so much. Definitely a great movie, and I'm going to re review it, so yeah, now. So, what is the story about? So, so the movie begins with Amanda Waller organising um, a task force team on a mission and it consists of um, lots of new members and many returning ones so one team um has harley quinn and also um colonel rick flag and also new members such as brian during also known as savant a computer tracker played by michael rucker blackguard uh, who is played by pete davidson and also um, T D T D K, which stands for, which stands for um, the Detachable Kid, played by Nathan Fillion, um, and also um, Javelin, um, who is played by, played by um, Flula Borg, um, and also um, um, Mongol, Mongol. So yeah, um, played by Mailing and N G. Her surname begins M G. So I have a butcher of a surname, but yeah. Now, and the other team consists of of, of um, Peacemaker, played by John Cena, and also King Shark, and also um, Polka Dot Man, and, Rat and someone called Ratcatcher too, who is the daughter of the original Ratcatcher, played by Taika Waititi. And oh, yeah, in the first team, we've also got Captain Boomerang, played by, reprising his role from the first one, which is Jay Courtney, so yeah. Now, um, now to be honest, guys, the start of the movie had me a bit sceptical because something sh quite surprising happened to, to the first team, consisting of Harley, Rick Flagg, Captain Boomerang, Savant, Blackguard, TDK, Javelin and Mongal. And at the start of the movie, guys, um, the entire team, except for Harley and Colonel Rick Flagg, they all get killed. So, yeah, they all get completely wasted. I was very disappointed that, 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 that you know, Captain Boomerang was killed because he, I really enjoyed him in, in the first film of Suicide Squad. And I had a weird feeling we we don't see much of him in this film because um, he was barely in the trailers. And, yeah, I was proven right because he got killed, sadly. And, however, um, luckily Harley and, and Rick Flagg survive. Um, and the other team is, is able to enter undetected due to the distraction caused by, you know, the other team. And Michael Rooker's character was, was a bit of a coward because he got so scared by, you know, the violence that he began to swim away. And Amanda Waller killed him by detonating a bomb inside his, his skull. So he caused him to explode. So, yeah. Now, the reason why they're going to this island is because it's called um, Corto Maltese. Um, um, because it's been over, the government's been overthrown by an anti-American regime. And their task would be with destroying Jotunheim, which is a Nazi-era lab that can hold a secretive experiment, which is known only as Project Starfish. So, so yeah, we get introduced to the teams, and now um, we got first introduced to Bloodsport, Robert Dubois, who is um, played by Idris Elba, who is in prison for shooting Superman with a kryptonite bullet and putting him in an intensive care unit. Luckily, Supes is still alive, guys. He's not dead, don't worry. But yeah, we didn't see him in the film. 
and he's he's given this mission um, to shorten his prison sentence, and and, he, and he's convinced to do it so that he can reunite with his daughter, who is a, who is a very a strange relationship with, because we see them on in the conversation room, and they were cursing and yelling at each other. It was pretty shocking, really. So yeah, and we also had Peacemaker played by John Cena, and I gotta say, Peacemaker and Bloodsport were definitely, you know, um, they were definitely, you know, um, show stealers in this movie, absolutely. I especially love John Cena's character, he was really awesome. Um, so, so they joined the teams, and then, um, so, after, you know, the end of the country undetected, thanks to the, the first team, you know, calling this distraction, the squad is able to, um, camp, um, now, with regards to Ratcatcher 2, uh, never knew who she was, but she has the ability to control rats, hence what she's called Ratcatcher. And yeah, and as I said before, she was sec she's the second version because she's the daughter of the original Ratcatcher, who's played by Taika Waititi, so yeah. Now, and Rick Flag goes missing after, you know, the, the attack, and uh, he ends up, you know, being captured by who we think is villains, but later there's a reveal. And Harley is captured by the government. Uh, in, in, as, instead, so yeah. Now, and the squad is able to find the camp where Rick Flag appears to be to be held, and they kill all of the guards there, all of them. And it was a pretty cool scene, actually. You know, lots of really cool fighting moves, but it was pretty gory. I will say that. Like one heart of this movie, guys, which is why I definitely prefer it over the original one, is because it is far more darker and bloody and gory. That just fits so well. I mean, it's R-rated as well, guys. And that's what you need for something about the Suicide Squad. So, yeah. Now. So, they find Flagger at base, but it turns out he's not a hostage. He's actually making friends with, with a leader called Saul Sawyer, played by um, Alice Braga. And I will say, guys, that even though Saul Sawyer didn't have much screen time in this movie, I think Alice Braga played her much better than the scientist in the new Mutants movie. Absolutely. Ian, well, my favourite role of hers is probably her role in I Am Legend, maybe. And also as Isabella in Predators. But yeah, she was still really good in this movie. Definitely better than her role as a scientist in The New Moons, because I thought she was pretty bland. So, so the squad convinces Saul Sawyer to assist them after, you know, they accidentally killed her team. She's a bit reluctant at first because they, they killed her people that are part of her, her group, but she reluctantly agrees to assist them. And their next objective is to capture the thinker. Now... The Thinker is played by Peter Capaldi, one of my favourite Scottish actors. I know him playing the 12th Doctor in Doctor Who, and of course, Malcolm Tucker in the comedy cover Thick of It. And i got to say, guys, but um, I really dislike The Thinker in the series 4 of The Flash, played by Neil Sandilands. But I will say, Peter Capaldi redeemed the character for me. He was awesome in the role. He really was brilliant as The Thinker. And he was playing a brand new version of the character because um, he's not called um, Clifford Duvall, he's called Gaius Greaves. So, yeah. Very different, and unlike the thinker from the comics, instead of wearing a suit with the rods in, the rods are literally stuck into his forehead, into his head. So yeah, that was a, a new change. So we have to capture him, and they do it at um, at a, a bar in, in the town of the island. And what's cool is where she got a cameo by, Pe you know, Pem Clementi, who plays Mantis in the MCU. We saw her cameoing as a dancer in, in the nightclub, which was pretty cool. And um, so Harley is captured by the government, but and um, she does kill the dictator um, after they, you know, she she appears to seduce him, but she's able to kill him by, uh, while he's distracted by shooting him with, with a gun that they accidentally knocked out of a gun cabinet, which smashed open, so yeah. Um, and then she gets, she's sent to be tortured, uh, and the president, who is played by... Um, Played by uh, Joaquin Coseo, who I know for being Angel in, in the show called The Strain, and of course, um, the voice in Scorpion in, in Spider Into a Spider Verse. And if you guys uh, have watched the Spanish dub of Ted, he, he dubs Ted in the Spanish version, so yeah. Um, she, she escapes, and we've got a pretty cool, you know, fight scene where she escapes, you know, her prison and she kills all the guards. It reminded me a lot of Yondu's escape from, you know, the prison he was held in, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It was pretty cool. Um, now after this, um, so she joins them and they and they escape the government uh, and then they're able to break into Jotunheim and um, and they rig it with explosives on the top level. Um, so while Flag and Ratcatcher to enter the lab with a thinker, and they discover that Project Starfish is none other than Star or a DC villain who is a giant starfish with a big eye in the middle who has the ability to um, replicate itself to create little versions which can attach themselves to the heads of people and control them. It kills them in the process, but they're under its control. 
And the thinker then reveals that Starro was brought to her by the American government, who had been secretly funding the experiments on Corsair Maltese for decades, and Peacemaker is under secret orders to cover up America's involvement. Rick Flagg wants to explore America's involvement, but um, this leads to a big standoff, and, and the explosives happen early, and it's revealed um, via an eight minutes earlier flashback that it was an accident caused by Polka Dot Man, because a fight between the m military accidentally causes Polka Dot Man to activate the explosives way too early than, it's than planned to. So, and after a brutal fight, um, um, Rick Flagg is able to e to um, is is killed by Peacemaker after he stabs him with um, a shard. Yeah. It was really brutal, guys. Absolutely. Um, and Ratcatcher is luckily able to get the drive containing the information on, on what the government's involved in from Peacemaker and runs off. And Bloodsport is able to save her by jumping through to where, they're, where he's trying to kill her by shooting literally through Peacemaker's bullet he fired at Bloodsport into his neck. Now, I, I kind of had a feeling that Peacemaker would not die in his film, guys, because he's got his own show coming up. But yeah. And, and of course, when you look at Amanda Waller's screen showing the, the squad, we could see he wasn't labelled as deceased yet. So, yeah, I had a feeling he would be alive. Star Wars escapes in the chaos because it's broken. he's broken through and he grabs a thinker and we got a really brutal death scene where he literally tears the thing, one of the thinker's arms and legs off and then he throws him into a, like a window and it makes him shatter to pieces. Oh, God, it was so gory. Ugh. Star Wars then kills the military and takes control of them using his little minions. Amanda Waller wants the squad to stand down, um, and the mission's complete, but Bloodsport wants to fight against star Wars. Now, Waller is yelling at them to stop, and then she's just about to execute like she did to Savant at the start with, you know, the, the bomb in their skulls, but one of the crew members um, working for her knocks her out so she can't kill them. Um, and they, they fight star Wars, and the fight scene went on for a bit, and uh, it was pretty good. Um, we got, you know, um, um, King Shark, you know, chewing on her, which was um, pretty cool. And Polka Dot Man was also able to, you know, take down one of um, Star Wars' legs. Because the thing about Polka Dot Man is, guys, um, he's gone a bit, you know, crazy. And all he can see is his mother. He can't see anyone else. All he can see is his mother. Now, I will say, guys, I'm not really a fan of Polka Dot Man. Like, before I saw this movie, I thought he was a pretty silly character, but after watching this movie, guys, I can say that I do care more about him now, thanks to, you know, David Dasmalian's performance. But, unfortunately, um, he's distracted by saying to Bloodsport he's a hero, and Star Wars stomps on him, so, yeah. That was a bit, you know, a bit sad. I think um, Polka Dot Man deserves better, um, but, yeah. Now, luckily, um, during the fight, however, Harley is able to vault using a javelin into the eye and, and pierce a hole in, in the eye of Star Wars. And then Ratcatcher summons the city's rats um, using that little torch that she had to chew Star to death from the inside and then Star Wars collapses. And as a fun fact, guys, Star Wars voiced by Taika Waititi, which is pretty cool. So he had two roles in this. Now, the military distracted due to the death of the president, um, but Sori is able to breach into, into, you know, the president building and take control. She takes control and she pledges democratic elections and the, the country is saved. And the squad's heroics are broadcasted all over the world um, and, and uh, Bloodsport's daughter sees this and I think she starts to believe in him, him, him again. And using the driver's leverage, Bloodsport forces Amanda Waller to release him and his, his teammates from imprisonment in exchange for keeping the contents confidential. And then they're airlifted. Then, guys, we've then got the credits, and we, and we got two um, post-credit scenes. Um, one before the credits, where it, it's revealed that a member of the first team called Weasel, played by um, Sean Gunn, who I believe is James Gunn's brother, is revealed to have survived because... In the first act of the movie, Weasel lands in the water and he appears to have drowned. So, yeah, I thought that was a pretty bit, bit of a waste, really. Because I thought he was very interesting. Um, but he was unfortunately wasted a lot. But thankfully, he's still alive. So, we might see him again in a future movie. Who knows? Then, after the credits, we've then got a scene revealing that, that, that um, Peacemaker is in hospital. And... And, and Wallace subordinates are going to make him work for them on some assignments. So, yeah, that's going to be teasing, of course, a Peacemaker show. So, yeah. Now, I will say, guys, that, um, you know, now, 
If you're wondering how I would, you know, rank this movie in terms of a DC Extended Universe film, so first of all, the score, um, because I love this movie, it's better than the first Suicide Squad movie in my opinion, but because um, the first Squad was wasted in the movie, and because I think Paul Cartman deserved better, I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10. Um, I think I like the Ultimate Edition about this Superman more than, than that film, so yeah, now, my ranking will go like this, so if you guys remember my ranking that I did back in June, um, my top 5 favourites, of course, are Man of Steel, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and also um, Shazam, Aquaman and Wonder Woman, after after that, the Ultimate Edition Batman vs Superman, and then after that, the Suicide Squad, so that's where I'd place it, I'd place it after, this, after Batman vs Superman, I'll put it in a pinned comment below as well, guys, to be clear. So guys, um, this is me reviewing the Suicide Squad directed by James Gunn. Great movie, I'd recommend it. It's really awesome. So you know, drill guys, um, be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to comment what you guys thought of Suicide Squad if you've seen it. We'll see what you guys' thoughts are on it. Um, also, be sure to join the team, and subscribe, more videos coming in the future, and I'll see you all later.